How are you doing over there? Out there? Are you doing great? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> One answer. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Day two. Okay. That's right. Uh, I truly understand. Um, and actually, today is uh, the first day that I actually stay home and deliver uh, this lecture to you. And of course, for the next two weeks, uh, I will continue to do so, to continue to stay home. Um, are you right, Matthew? Yeah, I, I miss school and of course, I'm, I dearly miss all of you, okay? Uh, so, uh, but it seemed to me that we have to do this um, until the end of the semester, I think. Um, that's some uh, logistics uh, about the, um, the exam, okay? So, because we will be online um, for the rest of the semester, so we have to do, um, um, to do exam online. So I will send out the information either today or tomorrow for you to learn about a new software. Uh, it is called ProctorU, okay? So make sure that you have, all of you have um, computers and make sure the webcam works on your computer, okay? So that uh, I can monitor uh, uh, the activity when you are doing the exam because uh, uh, with the webcam, web, webcam uh, I can see uh, all of you. Um, so even for me, I have to learn how to use that software as well. So I will send out the uh, information, the link, and uh, all um, uh, all the links uh, for you to train in advance. Okay. Okay. So um, let's start the lecture. Um, I hope that uh, you understand um, uh, the lecture, um, the chapter seven lecture, right? Um, up to this point, I think that uh, up to the slide 17. And I remember last time we stopped right there. We stopped at this, uh, um, at this uh, program, right? Uh, it's, it's kind of a, um, not a, a small uh, um, program anymore. Um, uh, so that's why maybe before talking uh, on um, talking about this problem again today, uh, I will actually um, um, review you a little bit uh, for the low command, okay? Low command from the memory. Uh, because in this, prob uh, in this uh, uh, problem, we have an array of 10 elements. So I would like to uh, review uh, how to take the element of the array into the register and store it back, okay? Um, so let's see. Let's see if you remember uh, remember the, the low command, okay? Low from memory. So let me move to the appendix. Yeah, appendix over here. And actually today I just um, added one more slide just uh, for you to be sure that you understand. Uh, and then we come back to try to understand the program, okay? So let's go to the appendix over here. And these are the commands that you already learned in chapter five. I think it's simple enough, right? So, but, but review anyway. Um, so let's review with me over here. Low uh, R1, and then in the square bracket over here, you have R0 and then four. Uh, so what does it mean? Do you understand this one? Okay. Oh, actually, uh, let me look at the, some of you have question over here. Let me see. Uh, maybe from uh, Azaria Proctor, you will flag you for leaving the exam, cheating if you move up abruptly. Oh, uh, so you actually used the Proctor U before already, Azaria? I didn't, know, uh, I didn't know how to use it. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, and let me see. Uh, wow, another, another student, uh, Michael... Kennedy, uh, he said, Proctor U sucks. <laughs> wow. Uh, so that's why you know, maybe we need a few weeks to just uh, to practice, okay? Um, and a UC Santa Barbara is banning it. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, I see. But uh, but I have to tell you, I mean, uh, this is the only only thing that we have here, I think, and I, I I was aware about this one just maybe just last week actually, just one week. So what can we do? I mean, we have to cope with the situation. Um, okay, so let let's come back to the lecture. Okay, so 
do you understand this command? The very simple command, right? So first of all, it is a low, um, a low instruction, right? So low mean, and then you see the square bracket. It means that you will take something from the memory into rest that I want. Is that right? Do you agree with me? And then whenever I, I tell you, please take something from memory to the register, you have to ask me, where is the address, right? We have to, we have to specify uh, the address for a person to go out to the memory and, and search for the address and pick uh, the right word and load into the register I want, right? So the address is calculated inside the square bracket over here, okay? Inside the square bracket. So the base address will be stored uh, in this case, in, in register R0, right? So R0 may, may store the address uh, 0, um, in hex uh, 2000000, for example, right? And 4 is offset. So it means that the address for you to go out there to search for the word is is the sum of the base address and the offset, okay? You, you have to add 4 first and then go out there and search for the word to load into our, our work. Did you understand? So actually, I put some explanation over here for you, okay? So um, for the second one, for the second uh, low command over here, the low instruction over here, do you understand? The idea is exactly the same thing. I mean, Lou, you are loading something from the memory into register R1, right? And again, the one inside, everything inside the square bracket is for you to calculate the address. So. Again, R0 is the base address, and R2, R2 will, uh, will store the offset, right? So R2 can be 4, can be 8, can be 12, uh, blah, 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 okay? So that's the, when you read this one, you know that, oh, the address will be calculated by adding the base address in R0 with the offset in R2, okay? Last thing, a little bit harder is for, for this one. So let's see. Let's see if you understand this one and, and, and tell me. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me look at uh, some of the response over here. Uh, Christian said this address remain unchanged after the operation. Okay. Uh, yeah, Azure will remain unchanged because over here we don't have the exclama uh, exclamation mark, right? So Azure will be the same. We will not update Azure. Um, however, do you know how to calculate the address uh, for you to search for the word to load into R1? Okay, so in this case, the Bay address is still zero. Uh, R0, I'm sorry, R0, okay? Okay, and then how about the offset? The offset is R2, no problem. However, uh, not only R2, but you have to shift R2 by uh, shift left uh, by two positions. Um, to obtain the offset, okay? And then you take that offset and add with the base address in R0. Okay, so understand? <laughs> a little bit harder. So um, uh, let me repeat again. What is the offset in this case? The offset, offset is specified from here to here, right? You obtain the offset by taking the value in R2, shift left by two bit, okay? Uh, to obtain the offset. And then you take that offset and add with R0 to find out the, uh, the final address. And then you look into the memory, memory for that address and load, load the word into R1, okay? Very good. So let uh, the slide that I, um, that I uh, added today, early today, uh, just for us to practice the, the last one over here, right? So let's move to the next one over here. Okay, so I, I was drawing this array, uh, this array of uh, integer, okay, uh, this morning, okay. So uh, please tell me, how many word, how many uh, integer, how many word, because the integer is a 32 bit, right, four, four bytes, okay. So how many word uh, are there in this, I'm sorry, in this array? Can you tell me, respond quickly. How many word, how many words uh, are there? Kristen said, oh, four, Ming said, four, William, wonderful, you you are so, uh, so wonderful, so nice, and can respond very quickly, wonderful. Okay, so four, first one here, one here, one here, and one here, okay? Okay, so 
now let let's practice okay so given an array of oh turn out that i already gave you the, <laughs> the answer here for interview <laughs> um shown on the right <laughs> okay um and then assume the base address is q zero 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 okay so the the base address is, is here okay so that address is stored inside r0 okay okay so now now if i if you execute the command the instruction the first instruction over here right so what will be the value in r1 okay anybody can 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 do that for me very quickly instruction what Remember, this is this one is a little uh, ambient, okay? Uh, some of I I received some response over here. Uh, it's zero zero zero. Okay. Um, wonderful. So let let me type over here. So the result should be uh, uh, zero. Huh? What happened? To my keyboard. Zero x, okay. Zero one by, okay. Four by, right? Two by, three by, four by. Okay. Do you agree with me? It is actually this one because because uh, to to calculate the address, you should take the base addresses here plus four. This is the pre-index plus four. So the address that we we are looking for is two zero 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 four. Right, and then from there you take the the integer up and load this one into R one. Okay, no problem. That's good. Okay, that's easy, right? So now let let's do something more difficult. Okay, so that's the second instruction over here. Okay, second instruction, right? So the base address is still the same. It's the base address is here. Okay, and I will read you. Don't worry about R two. I will give, give you the the value for R two for you. So if R2 is zero, okay? If R2 is zero, what is the offset? Please respond. If R2 is zero, what is the offset? Remember that we have to shift the, the by two to the left, right, of R2. So what is the offset? If R2 is zero, G just is typing, no offset. One of uh, Adam, no offset, zero, zero. That's good, right? Because zero shift left by two is still zero, right? So in that case, what will be the word in R1 after I uh, executed this instruction? If R2 equal to zero. Kristen said, A, B, C, D, five, five, seven, seven. Do you agree with him? And Ming also said the same thing. William also too. Yeah, I agree with all of them. Okay, that's the correct answer. Wonderful. Okay, so now, now, how about if R1, oh, I'm sorry, if R2 equal to 1, okay, what is the offset? Okay. Uh, Christian said offset is two, Mark said offset is two, Adam said four. Anybody uh, else? Any uh, any uh, other? Uh, Ming two, Christian four, William, uh, William actually eight. Okay. Uh, you know what? I really appreciate uh, all of the responses. Okay. The correct or incorrect, no problem. Uh, I accept uh, them all. Okay. Um, but the correct answer is actually four the offset is four if r1 is one did you know why because just imagine if you have uh, a binary uh, value of one right and if you shift left by two position will you obtain four do you agree with me right so let me type over here so for example if you have um, if you have four bit binary number right so the, for um, uh, uh, if, well, to represent R2. So um, if R2 is 1, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0001, for example, just for bit, okay? Right? That's 1, right? 
So now, if I shift that one to the left by two, I will obtain zero, one, zero, zero. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me, right? And that is actually four. Zero, one, zero, zero is four, right? Understand, right? Okay, so now, if R1, if R0, uh, I mean, if R2 is zero, you will, you will take that, uh, you will take this one into R1, right? If R2 is one, then the offset is four, right? It's similar to this one. So the word, the integer that you will pick up from the memory and load into R1 is actually this integer, right? Zero, right? How about, how about if R2 equals two? What is the offset? Wonderful, now you, uh, all of you get the idea. Exactly, right. So um, shift left by two is basically equivalent, is equivalent to multiply by four, right? So if R2 is two, then the offset is eight, and then what word uh, will you load into R1? That will be this guy, is that right? A, B, C, D, five, five, seven, seven, is that right? Right? And then if offset is a three, right? Then you will take this one. A, B, C, D, five, five, seven, seven into uh, this, uh, I mean this integer into R1. Okay, so now you will see uh, uh, by, this, uh, by this point, I think that you see the point, right? So uh, if you really want to take the, uh, to access uh, element, uh, elements of uh, an array, for example, right? So you can, you can use the loop index in here, right? Do you understand? So if you increase the index from zero, one, two, three, something like that, you will sequentially take the word uh, sequentially over here, this one to R1 or this one, right? Next time you will take this one. Uh, when R2 equal to two, you will take this one. When R2 equal to three, you will take this one, right? So it's, it, this instruction is very, very useful for you to sequentially uh, access each element of an array. Okay, understand? So with that, let's go back to uh, the program that um, uh, on, let me see, on, on this page, okay? So if you understand this program, then we're done for uh, chapter seven, okay? And then we can move to uh, chapter eight. Okay, so let's see if you understand this one. No problem. Uh, over here, we uh, proceed, maybe you look at C first, right? If you understand C, then um, understanding uh, uh, assembly uh, program over here will be very, very easy, right? So uh, in C over here, you declare an array of 10 elements and the number, uh, and you also uh, initialize them, the value for these 10 elements um, to be minus one, five something. And it seemed to me that I did that. I draw that one for you uh, last time uh, over here, right? That's your array over here, okay? And what else? And then you also have another variable to store the size of the array. So that's 10, 10 elements, right? So that, um, um, that size uh, variable, uh, number 10, so I actually I store in register R3 over here, okay? So you can see over here uh, for assembly language, um, we store the array in here by using the directing CD, right? You already know to allocate the memory over here and also to initialize the values uh, for the array over here. And I also have um, a variable size over here, okay? With the label here, I use the label size over here to denote the variable size. And I, I store the number 10 in there, okay? And okay, so, and that's done for the, uh, for the area, data area over here, okay? So this is it. The C over here is equivalent, equivalent to assembly uh, over here, okay? So now let's see. Uh, okay, so now let's go to the main program over here, right? So this is just a, something, uh, declaration, some kind of directive that you already know already. So I don't need to uh, go uh, get into this point. And the net loop over here, we don't really need to get to that one because you know this one already. We talk about that again and again. So your job is only to understand from here 
to there, and that's and, and we're done, right? So first of all, look at over here. Look at the C four row, right? So the strategy is, you know what, to search, to search from uh, sequentially, to search from uh, from here to there. And that's all, right? So first of all, we initialize the. Uh, we have two variables over here, so uh, the max location, right? Max location is the index of the of the max value, right? So what we really want to have is the program will return five because the max value is 23 over here, right? And the index for this one is uh, zero here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? We would like the program to return five. That's the first one. Uh, and store in the variable uh, max location, okay? At the beginning, we, we just uh, initialize zero so that we can start from there. The second variable is max value. The max value that I really want the program to find out is 23, right? Uh, but of course, we don't know that yet, right? Uh, we, we need a loop to do that. But uh, at the beginning, initially, we just um, assign the max value to be the value in the, uh, the first element of the array, meaning uh, negative one. Just, just initialize the, um, the max value to be negative one for now, and the max, the max location to be uh, zero for now, right? And then we will increase the um, the index um, uh, later. Okay, to search in, you know, later. Okay, so as I said, we also need um, um, a variable to uh, to keep the loop index right. In this case, it's i, right? So I will use r two for that purpose. Okay, I will use r two um, uh, to keep track of the, the loop uh, iteration. Okay, so I'll. Uh, Starting with zero, starting because uh, because the loop is uh, initialize i equal to zero over here. Okay, so if you look at the loop, it will um, it will have uh, ten iteration, right? Because psi here is ten, so it will start from zero, one, two, three, up to nine. So it will have ten uh, um, iteration, and then inside inside the uh, each loop iteration. You just do this for me, okay? What do you do? You just compare the array element i, okay, with the max value so far, okay? Um, initially, the max value, of course, that's a negative one, right? Um, and then, if the max value so far, right, is, well, let me see, yeah. If it is greater, if the uh, uh, let me repeat again, if the array element i is greater than the max value so far, then you have to replace uh, the the old max value with the new max value, right? The new max value is array i, right? Is that right? So that's why you assign the array i to the max value, right? And then the location of the max value at that instant is i. Right? Okay. Right? Um, for example, for example, uh, we start from, uh, let's say, when i equal to 1, for example, when i equal to 1. Okay? Uh, array 1 is which element? Array 1 is 5. Is that right? Do you understand? And do you, and then do you will do this comparison. Is 5 greater than the max value. Remember the, the, the max value previously is negative one, right? So of course phi is greater than a negative one. So that's why you have to replace max value uh, with phi, is it right? So you in, uh, you in the, uh, you assign phi into the max value over here. And the max location is now one, is that right? Okay. But you're not done yet because that's only you just look at only two elements, right? So you have to increase i to two. Right, so you will get to the element three over here, right? So you will ask yourself again if three is greater than five, right? Of course, it's not. If it's not greater than five, then you, you don't do anything, right? You just come back here and go uh, and increase the loop index again uh, to um, i equal to three, right? So when i equal to three, it's actually go to a over here, right? So now. If i equal to three, then you can see that a is greater than five, and then you replace the max value, um, replace five by a, right? 
and the master location um, will be updated to three, right? So, uh, and so on. If you do something like that, finally, you will get to 23, right? And you, the max location you will find out is five, and the max value you know, is 23. And then for later on, uh, for, for these values, it will never go into the if uh, statement anymore because all these uh, values are smaller than 23, okay? So do you understand, okay? So before uh, looking at the assembly program, let's just uh, try to remember a few things. So R3, we, uh, I use R3 to store the, um, the array size variable 10, okay, size. Uh, um, the array size over here, that's uh, in, in R3, okay? I use R2 uh, for the variable R, the loop index, okay? And R0 for the max value, and R1 for the max location, max index, okay? So these two will will probably will change uh, um, uh, um, every iteration, okay? It, it will be updated, right? Uh, depend on the condition, the if condition over here. Okay? Okay, so with that, let's look at the assembly program from here to here, and we're done. Okay? So first of all, uh, as I said uh, in the in the previous uh, slide, I like to low the side here, number 10 over here, into register R3. Okay? So these two instructions uh, will um, we have that effect. The effect is to load number 10 here from the memory to the register R3. And this one you already know already. And I asked you about that in midterm number one, so I will not repeat it, right? So just remind you that after these two instructions, 10 will be in uh, uh, register R3 as I, I said over here, okay? Right here, okay? And what else do we have to do the, to, to do the setup? We should initialize the max location to zero and uh, and the max value to uh, the element uh, array zero as well, right? So that's what I'm I'm doing. I'm doing like this. Um, um, okay, let me see. R one, right? R one is the max location over here. So I initialize it to be zero. I just move zero, copy zero into R one. So that is here. That's for that, right? And uh, lastly, I'd like to ask you how to load negative one from the memory to, uh, to register R zero. And you already know, right? So if you really want to load the first element over here, you basically have to know the address, basically initial address of the array, right? So maybe the array, maybe the array starts from here, right? So you have to know the address of that one, right? Okay, so let me come back to here and look at over here, okay? So you can see array has a label over here, right? And this label imply the address. So first of all, you load that address into R4, right? And and then you use you use R4 over here, you use that address to load the first element, right? The element at, at, at that address, at the array address into R0. So that's why R0, after these two instructions, will have the value of negative one, right? Negative one there, right there. Okay, so up to this point, we understand. So now, just a little bit over here and we're done, okay? So, uh, okay, so, so look at over here. So you have, you have um, a loop, right? Kind of embedded thing, the combination of or and if. So please, uh, you already learned about the loop and, and if already, so try to uh, remember the syntax, uh, uh, the, the template. So for for loop, for example, for for loop, right? So first of all, you have to compare uh, to compare the loop index to see if it is still smaller than the side, right? So if it's greater than uh, if it is greater than, than or equal, then you have to quit, right? You have to quit down here. So that, let's see to see if that's true. So first of all, if you compare R2 with R3, what is R2, what is R3, I already forget. R2 is a loop index, see? And R3 is a side, right? So you compare zero with 10, right? And 
if it is greater than or equal, if R2 is greater than or equal to R3, means, means 10, right? Then you should quit the loop, right? So that's why you go to stop down here. Okay? And you're done, right? If not, if the uh, if i is smaller than 10, right, then you start to go into the if uh, uh, statement over here, right? Okay, so if you go, the if statement compare the value at the array with index i and the max value so far, right? And the max value so far is stored in register r0. So you really have to compare the array value with the value in the in I0. Okay, so let's see. Over here, first of all, first of all, you have to take the value out from the memory first, right? And this is exactly what we just learned about. Right? We just learn to load something from the memory into register R5. Okay? Into the register R5 over here. Okay? And the base address is actually specified by R4. And R4, you know, R4 you already know before, right? R4 is the address, the initial address of the array, right? So in this example, I assume that the initial address of the array is 2000000, for example, okay? All right? Okay, so you know the, basically this one is to know the, um, the memory element of the array into register alpha. So for the first iteration, you take the first element in, right? Right? The second iteration, when R2 increased to one, because you increase R2 down here, you update the loop over here, right? And then you come back over here. So the second loop at the iteration, you will take the, um, you will take the element one of the array into alpha. For the third, uh, iteration, you will take the third element of the array into alpha, right? And so on, something like that. This is a, I just explained to you already. This, basically, this instruction is just to take the array i into register alpha, right? So when you take the array i into um, uh, register r5, and then you have to compare to see if r5 is greater than the max value in, where is the max value? max value is in R0, right? So you com you will compare between R5 and R0 over here, right? Right? This is the comparison for the if over here, right? So for these, um, uh, inside the if, you need to do only two things, right? Um, if the array i is greater than this one, see the condition in, uh, execution over here? Greater than, greater than, right? If it's greater than, then you have to replace R0 with R5. No problem, right? No problem. And you also need to replace um, R1 with the loop index R2, okay? And then finally, for the for loop over here, don't forget, inside the body of the for loop, you have to increase the loop index over here. So that's one, this is at the end of the, of the for loop over here. And uh, after you, uh, you increment the, uh, the loop index uh, in R2, then you look back over here and do the comparison again uh, between I and the side. Wonderful. Okay. Did you understand? I hope that by uh, by now you understand everything uh, about about um, this program. Okay. Very good. So let's see if uh, anybody has uh, any questions uh, before I uh, I start chapter eight. Any any last question? Okay, so Matthew asked if in that DCD we have a DCB. Uh, DCB, then it would be, uh, you have uh, the right idea, okay, uh, the correct idea. However, I don't believe that you need one over here, okay? Because here one means you shift one, and shift one means multiply by two. Remember for, uh, for bytes, you don't really need to shift anything. You just remove this part, okay? Just R2. Yeah, and, and, and that's it. That's good. I, I, I'm happy that 
I'm glad that you, you know that and you asked the question uh, for uh, for many other students as well. Probably they will have the same question. Uh, Very good question. Okay, any, uh, any last minute questions? If not, then uh, please wait for me uh, one minute for me to load the new lecture into, into this, right? I will uh, unload the, the old lecture, chapter seven, and load chapter eight uh, for you, okay? So please wait for me, uh, one minute. Okay, great. So I think that we um, we have uh, proceeded um, very very quickly. I think from 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 chapter four, uh, you learn. I think that you learn some kind of uh, arithmetic uh, operation, right? Some kind of add and subtraction. It's like like uh, preschool, <laughs> kind of preschool add and subtraction. And then for uh, chapter five, you move on to to do some kind of uh, uh, memory access, right? Take something from memory into um, into the register and back. So that's good. So your level actually uh, increased um, to maybe high school level, okay? So now I try to upgrade um, your skill to uh, university level by uh, teaching you um, how, to, how to write subroutine, how to call subroutine and return from subroutine uh, in assembly language, okay? So we we actually uh, um, make a lot of progress up to this chapter, right? So I think I think that by uh, you probably did that for a high level uh, um, a language like C and Java, Python, right? Tons of time already, right? So so I think that you know the concept of uh, uh, calling a subroutine and returning uh, from a subroutine, right? So let's see uh, um, let's see how to do that in assembly language. Okay, so um, maybe let's read through this one very quickly because I think you already know a subroutine also for a function or a procedure is uh, blah blah blah. We tend to call it after it ex exits, no problem. Um, okay, so the only um, okay, so this is an example of subroutine in, in term because uh, uh, I remember last semester um, when I asked uh, if every student uh, know about the, the subroutine in C, uh, several of them uh, didn't know about it, right? So that's why I like to put this one, a very, very simple uh, uh, um, calling um, and then returning from the subroutine uh, for you to have an idea in case if you don't really know um, this concept from the high level uh, language programming, right? So in this case, I just have two functions over here. They have a very simple function, a main function over here, and another function for calling function. Okay, so the main function I, I will try to to use the main function to call uh, this function, right? And then this function returns. Okay, so if you look at over here, uh, look at over here with me. So first of all, of course, it, yeah, every everything uh, every um, everything will uh, we start from main, right? So you go in and you print this one out. So this is the output over here. I am the calling function. I will print that one out. No problem, right? That's easy. <coughs> right? And then in the main program, I actually call a subroutine over here, right? I, I call the subroutine uh, with the name calling. And calling is down here, right? So basically, basically the control will be transferred from the main function over here to the subroutine. Do you agree with me, right? So when you jump from, when you execute this one, it will jump from here down to this point and then execute the subroutine over here. And that's why uh, the, the output that you will see will be I am the call, <coughs> the, option, the second line over here. Okay, understand? Okay, and then when I'm done with the subroutine, 
what do I do? I really have to return to the main function again, right? Where should I return? I have to return to the instruction right after the subroutine call over here. Is that right? So uh, after I'm done with the subroutine over here, I have to return to this instruction, okay? With this command, right? So that's why when I, after returning from this one, I will continue to execute um, uh, this instruction and and uh, that's why the output is I am done over here. Okay, so you know, you, do you understand uh, how it works over here, right? Uh, how it works, it, of course, in C, so that's a very easy, right? But how do we implement the jumping over here, from here to here? How do we implement the return from here to here? Return from here to here is also a jump, okay? This is the one jump, and then this is another jump, okay? How do we jump in assembly language? Do you remember? Uh, let me open, let me open chapter five, oh, let me see chapter, oh, chapter six actually, that's the branches, so let me show you, uh, if you don't remember, then, then let me, uh, let me uh, remind you, okay, so, um, let's see, um, I have to share the screen, let's see, share application, and, ah, okay, I hope, I hope I share correctly. If you can see it. Okay, uh, this is a from uh, chapter six, okay? Do you remember this one? Uh, last time I told you, okay, uh, maybe for now, just care about branch and branch link, right? Uh, because at that time, uh, actually, I just want to, to teach you the loops, loops and if, right? However, now we learn about the, um, the subroutine call. So probably you have to know about BX as well. So branch is usually used in uncon unconditional or maybe if you add some conditional uh, suffix services over here, uh, you can use for if and, and loop, right? But for calling subroutine, it's actually we mostly use these two, branch link, uh, for jumping to the subroutine, okay? And BX to return from the X routine, uh, to, from the subroutine, these two. And that's, well, these two we will focus on today, okay? So let me uh, return back to uh, the main lecture, okay? So two jump over here. So this one you will use BL, okay? And this one, you will use BX, okay? Right? Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, so I introduced the register uh, a little bit at a time for you. The last time, you already learned about the tips and the 13 general uh, purpose register, right? For you to do calculation, no problem. That's the last one you know, right? And, uh, the R13, the stack pointer, we will learn today, so don't worry about it. So the PC, you already learned. PC is to um, to specify the address of the next instruction that the processor will execute, right? So whenever whenever address, you put it over here right, in, in PC. The PC just grab that one and go out to the memory, instruction memory, okay? And fit that instruction into uh, the processor for execution, right? So just remember that whenever you, you you put some address in PC, the processor will understand that, oh, okay, you just gave me address of the next instruction for me to execute, okay? So that's what it means. Um, so, and then link register is actually exactly what we, uh, we like to use today, whenever you want to jump to a subroutine, okay? Um, um, and, yeah, so the link register is the one that store the address of the next instruction over here. When it call the callee, right, it try to remember the address of this one. The address of this one is actually uh, just the PC plus four from, from the callee, right? So it will store that address in the link register 
for it to remember uh, when it when it jump back over here when it jump back over here it will look at the link register to see what address in there to find out where to jump back right so the link register is, is very very useful it, it's it kind of uh, tell you where to jump back and, and in this case the link register has the address of this string I'm done over here, this instruction. So that's why you can safely come back from here to there, okay? So, um, okay, so now you, you understand the link register already. Yeah, link register holds the return address. So just remember that. Maybe that's a good multiple choice question for the exam, who knows, okay? Um, okay, so move to here. Uh, uh, more example for you to understand. So if you look over here, right? So there are two functions. This is the uh, the the calling function, and this is the calling function. So <coughs> now I give you the example in assembly language. So I have two functions: the caller program over here, and the subroutine over here. So I this is the the for the main function over here. I uh, what do I do? I, I copy 100 into a register of 4, uh, and then I could call the subroutine. And the subroutine name is foo, okay? The foo here, the, the label over here. So when I see this one, oh. do you see the brand link over here? That's the, that's the instruction we use for, for this, right? So you have to do two things. You also you jump from here to here, meaning brand, okay? And you also need to link, <laughs> meaning you have to remember the the address of the uh, address of the next instruction right here. Okay, maybe the dot 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 over here. I don't know what it is, but it will remember that address and save the address of that instruction in the link register. So remember two actions related to this instruction. Okay, uh, it jump to full and also save the the address of the next instruction here in the link register. Okay, then you jump to here. Then you jump to, to full. Okay, and inside full, we what what will you do? You move, you copy, uh, you copy number ten to register R four. Okay, and you may do some kind of calculation. I don't know, right? But at the end, when you are done with the full program, you have to jump back to here. Is that right? Do you agree with me? Right. And then you continue to do the uh, in the main program. You continue to uh, to increase uh, R four to one hundred one because uh, right before it's one hundred. So now you, you add with one, so R four will be uh, will be one hundred one, right? So so uh, at the end of uh, of the subroutine over here, you have to jump back to here, and that's what it is. You use the instruction bx, okay? Bx. The, the, the effect of this one is it will, uh, and you specify a register over here, okay? And inside this register, it has some kind of address, right? So the effect of this one is to copy the address in the link register into the PC. This is uh, the, meaning of, the meaning of BX, okay? Okay? Right? And that's why if you copy LR into the PC, it will jump back to this point. That's how you, you return from the subroutine to the main program, right? Uh, one more point that I, uh, one more point that I uh, would like to remind you is, um, do you do you uh, do you see that in, in the main program I use register R four? Is that right? Do you pay attention to that detail? Is that right? I love over here, right? And then when I jump to the the, the subroutine, I copy 10 to R4, right? So it seemed to me that somehow in the subroutine, I destroy the value 100 of the main function. So when I come back to here, R4 is 10, not 100 anymore. So but why over here say R4 equal to 101? Do you, do you, understand, do you know? Somebody can answer that question for me?
Linders the only remember the value from the four. Oh, Kristen, yeah. Uh, Linder is the just store only uh, from whenever you 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 jump, uh, you have a subroutine jump, right? It will store into the link register at that time, right? Okay. So uh, anybody answer my question about R four over here? It seems to me that the the pool here actually override the R four over here. That's too bad, right? That's very bad. It should not. Uh, so anybody tell me the solution? How to avoid that uh, situation happen? Remember, this R4 is the same R4 over here. The processor just have one R4, and it is shared between the subroutine and the main program, right? So when when you share between the two, I mean, uh, the subroutine can destroy the value of the main program. So how to avoid that situation? Any suggestion? Will we want to use another register? Uh, can you talk a little bit louder? Sorry. Uh, would we use another register then? Or oh, you move that, uh, you save the, the, the old R4 into some other register? Oh, oh I understand. You, you, mean, uh, mm, uh, you mean that uh, for the main program, we can use a different register. And for the subroutine, we use a uh, different register. Is that right? That's what you, you mean? And that's what I was thinking. Wonderful. Yeah, that's one solution. That's right. That's one solution. However, remember that we don't have a lot of registers, right? We have only 13. So now if you run a, a, a huge program, then I think that the, 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 there will be a conflict between the two, right? Because you have a very limited number of registers in, in here, right? So you will have a conflict. In this case, only one register. So maybe you can use a different one, right? But for example, if the main register you uh, 20 of them, and the subroutine you 20, right? So how can you avoid? Okay, let me let me stop. Just uh, uh, one, uh, one, uh, maybe ten seconds for to see if anybody can. Uh, okay, Muhammad respond. Uh, let me see. R four equal one hundred after BL two. Yeah, but remember inside foo, we chain R four to ten, right? So then, then, uh, then from here, R four is actually ten plus one equal to eleven, not one on one. So why in this case is it one on one, not eleven? Ah, now I just see. I just see the the answer, the response that I'm looking for. This is from Adam. Adam said. Store the data in memory. Wonderful. Yeah, if you anticipate that the subroutine will destroy some value from the main program, right? Then why don't you save it in memory, right? You save it in memory. So you save a hundred in memory, and then after saving, the subroutine had to do that to save that uh, in memory, and then you can do whatever you want to do with R four, and then at the end you upload the value 100 from the main memory that you saved before, upload back to R4, basically to restore the R4 value to, to 100. And that's why in the, the main program can continue to proceed without interruption over here. Understand? So that's good. So uh, we will learn about that one at the end of today. So mainly in this case, you have to use to save uh, the value of R4 in a, a special region of the memory, uh, it is called stack. Okay, stack. We, in this case, we saw the uh, the value in the stack. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so let's move on. Um, and another another thing that I, I like to uh, to remind you is in, in this case it's very simple. When I call the subroutine here, you can see that I have no arguments at all, right? This is not very interesting, right? Where we, <coughs> we want to call function, sub -fun uh, function or subroutine in uh, high-level language, you usually pass some number for the subroutine to do the calculation and return the result, right? Right. So in this case, it's simple, no argument at all. But in case if you use, uh, if you have arguments to pass to the subroutine, 
how do you how do you do that in in assembly language okay so we will explore all of that okay so let's go to here oh by the way before going to that one let's review the uh, the uh, the bl instruction first okay um and then i think some of you uh, asked question about branch and link too right so you can see the this one brand and link to full is actually equivalent to two action right whenever you see this uh, instruction so it, it will do two things the first one is actually it store the address of the next instruction right after the call right after right after the, the separate team call it will store the address of that instruction into the link register and then it will jump to the label, meaning it will copy the address of the subroutine into the PC, into the programming counter, right? Whenever you copy in, anything into the programming counter, the, the processor will execute that command because that the address, that the, the, the one in PC will specify the address of the instruction that will be executed next, right? So just remember these two steps over here, okay? Um, and you can see over here BL jump to full, right? So um, okay, it, it just revealed. Um, okay, and how about BXLR, right? So this is a U to return. Remember that the return address you already know you, you store in the error the link register before, right? So whenever you the effect of this instruction is to copy LR into the PC, right? And that's why that's how you jump back from the subroutine. Uh, subroutine over here back to the instruction right after the the subroutine call over here this instruction okay right here it will jump back to that after uh, this instruction okay so let's move to move on to here okay this is another example over here right just uh, more and more example for you so this is a C program over here uh, I have a function called sum a subroutine sum right and the subroutine here, uh, different from before, in this case, um, I have the subroutine here accept two arguments over here, two numbers, A1 and A2. And the subroutine is basically just add them together and then return the sum, right? Return the sum. So in this case, you can see the main function over here. This is a subroutine call over here, okay? Subroutine call over here. Uh, so jump to here. And then it will do the um, adding, and then return return the sum uh, here, and that sum will be assigned to variable t, to the global variable t. So the subroutine call is here. Okay. So if you really look into the assembly language, the corresponding assembly language, it is right here actually. Right. So now I can tell you. Now I just asked you how. How does the main program pass the arguments to uh, to the subroutine? So there is a convention. Uh, from now on, you have to follow that convention. Okay. So if you if you have uh, one argument, uh, you will put you could put that argument on rest R zero. Okay. That's how you pass it, and then the subroutine will will pick up that uh, value from rest R zero. Okay. How about if you have two? If you have two arguments, two two word, for example, right? Then the second word you have to put in register R1 before you call. Okay? Something like that, okay? So if you have three words, if you you, you pass uh, three integers or something like that, you then you have to you you have to put the uh, the arguments uh, in register R0, R1 and R2, blah blah blah, okay, and so on. Okay? So in this case, you put the argument on uh, in R zero and R one, and then you call the subroutine. Okay, you call uh, branch and link sum two, right? So sum two, you have to know where the label is. Aha, uh -huh. right here. The subroutine is right here. So you you jump from here down to here, and and in the subroutine over here, the sum two, you have only two instructions. The first instruction is to add these two numbers together, and you know that already. There's a convention, right? You know that the the argument will be on R zero and R one, so that's why you take R zero and R one, add them together, and just lastly, 
and return value will be put on R0. That's how you put, uh, that's a, another convention, how you pass back the values from the subroutine to the main function. Um, so I can tell you the convention is the result, the return value, will be put on R0, okay? If you return more than, yeah, multiple ones, then you have to put on R, or if the return value is more than one, one word, then you have to use two registers, R0 and R1, right? If it's a, if it's a, uh, is it, if the return value um, uh, have, let me see, 64, 96 bits, for example, then you have to use R0, R1, uh, R2 to store the return value, okay? So uh, that's why you can see over here, over here we, because we, we return only one value, one word. So you, can, you see that we add R0 and R1 together and put the result back into R0. So, and the, the, the main function over here understand that one, right? It knows that the result will be on R0 for it to check, okay? So that's why, and then the subroutine will return back to the main function using the instruction BXLR that we just learned about. So whenever the subroutine uh, executes this one, you know where to return, right? The address in LR is the address of this instruction, actually. Because as I said, when you call the subroutine, the address of the next instruction will be stored in LR. So that's why uh, when you execute this command, you know where to return. Basically, you actually return to, to this instruction. And then you uh, you just store that result, right? R zero result in the variable t over here, and t is in the memory over here. Okay, understand? Uh, uh, let me. William said the have a question. So equal t is lr. No, no, uh, no, uh, William. Equal t is the address of the variable variable t down here. Okay. Lr is the address of the instruction of the instruct the, the LDR instruction and this in instruction is in the uh, in the instruction memory okay T is actually in the data memory that's a different that's a different address okay understand William well what we're doing although T is set zero well, what we're doing is when we if, um, pass um well, when we do uh, LDR, we are exactly here, exactly here. And we take the, because we know the address of the, the LDR instruction in the instruction memory, right? So when you jump back here, you basically take that instruction LDR from the instruction memory, bring it into processor for it to execute. So when you return from here, you actually execute this instruction, okay? Understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So let's move to uh, to the next instruction over here. Um, Okay, so now you, I just uh, talk about that to you. So whenever you call the, the subroutine, right? So if you um, um, if you want to pass a 30, 32 bit argument, so you can put that one uh, in R zero. But if you have more than that, so you can use R one, R two, and R three for that purpose. Uh, for that purpose, okay? And the return value, you put the return value all in R zero. Um, R0 over here, okay? And if argument one, uh, oh, um, if the return value has 128 bits, for example, then probably, uh, and then you have to use all four registers here to store the, um, the, the return value, okay? So um, this is a, and I want to talk a little bit about, um, about this colon, right? Um, and this related to the example that we just talked about, the exam example of uh, 101 and 11, do you remember, right? Over here, right? So if the subroutine, if the subroutine use some register, uh, some um, critical value that the main program use, right? So you have to save it into the memory, right? And then at the end, you have to restore that one for the main function. So over here, the table say which one you should save, right? So the subroutine should save register R4 to R11 over here, 
not R9, but this is a, this pattern to say, right? Uh, the subroutine doesn't need to save R0 to R3 because that's convention. Convention is that for R3, um, R0 to R3, that's for argument. So the, the main function will tell the subroutine for R0 to R3, you don't need to save it for me. I will not uh, use it for any anything else uh, besides passing um, the argument to you. So you don't need to save it. However, I expect you mean that the main function will tell the subroutine. I expect you to save these register for me because I store something, I am doing calculation. I, I am in the middle of that. So don't destroy that for me. Don't destroy that uh, the, the value uh, for me, okay? So you need to save that the value in R4 to R11 here uh, for me. And then at the end, when you're done subroutine, at the end, if you're done, you have to restore the value from R0. Basically, whatever you use, you have to restore the value for me, okay, from here to here. Uh, besides, you also need to uh, restore the, um, uh, for the stack pointer, SP. Oh, I didn't tell, talk about the stack pointer yet, huh? Uh, okay, so uh, maybe that later. But these are, this column will tell you which one, which register the subroutine uh, needs to say for the, the, the main function and needs to restore at the end of the subroutine, okay? So the link list is here a little bit confusing over here. Um, it's saying no over here. If you if you call the subroutine only one time, you don't need to say because that address is actually in the link register already, right? Nobody destroyed it. However, if the subroutine call, calls another subroutine, right? And then it will destroy that LR, the link register. So in that case, you really had to save the LR register as well. Understand? So let me repeat again. The LR, if, if your subroutine doesn't call anybody, then you don't really need to uh, save the LR register. However, if the subroutine also call another subroutine, then you really have to save the LR register as well and restore the LR value at the end, okay? Um, okay, so let's move to, uh, to here. So this is just the just the uh, review, you know, what I already said. So for the main function, if the main function has argument to the subroutine, it will use R0, R1, R2, and R3 for that purpose, okay? Right? So it's, a, it's small enough, 32 bits, use one of them. If it's 64 bit, if you have two argument, then you have to use two, right? Um, and then you pass that for the subroutine, right? And the subroutine will return the value and put on the uh, put the re return value in the register R zero. Okay, and this is already convention. They are the the subroutine and the main function uh, understand the the convention, right? So after the subroutine return, the uh, the main function knows that oh, okay, he already put the uh, the result in register R zero for me, right? If R0 is bigger than, than 32 bit, then you uh, then it will expect the result uh, into other register, register as well. R1, R2, and R3, right? So maybe uh, um, maybe the question is, uh, what happens if the main function has more than four more than uh, four words, right? So what do you do? How do you do that? How do you pass the value to the subroutine? The convention here is only only from zero to R zero to R three. Anybody can give me a, a, an example, a, a, a suggestion. Wonderful, Mark just uh, given uh, uh, give me the suggestion. Yes, if you have more than that, more than four, right? So where should I? I put the, the, the argument for the subroutine to execute. And then, then, of course, in that case, you have to put into a special region of the memory. And that special region is called stack, right? So you, you, you put the extra argument in there, and you tell the subroutine, hey, uh, hey you, uh, you need to, to pick up some uh, argument from the stack as well, okay? I don't have enough room for you. So I put four over there for you already. So the fifth, the sixth, the second, please go to the stack and take from there. Understand? And then we will talk about the stack um, uh, 
maybe if we have time, probably not not enough time today, but um, we will talk about that next week, no problem. So let's see, let's go. Okay, so this is also a review, right? So for from R0 to R3, when the main program called the subroutine, the main program will tell the subroutine, you don't need to save these register, right? You don't need to, just because I use this register uh, um, to pass you the arguments, right? And for you, you can view this area after you take the argument over here. You can view this one as a scrap uh, paper to do your calculation, whatever you want, right? You don't need to save these. And then the main function, the the call, the calling function, will tell the subroutine. However, from here to here, from R four to R eleven over here, please save it for me because I I am using it for my calculation. So you have to save that one for me. And then at the end, when you're done, restore the value of this thing for me. Understand? Okay. So maybe in the exam, I will ask you, uh, when you in assembly language, when you write the subroutine, when you write the code for a subroutine, do you need to uh, save the value of register R5 and restore that value after the subroutine is done? Then what is your answer? Your answer is yes, right? Right? Very good. So let's, uh, let's see. Um, you know, we have only two minutes, so let me, let me talk a little bit uh, uh, about this one, and, and we can pick it from here uh, next time, okay? So as I said, uh, stack is a special region in memory, right? And it's, you, uh, it used, it's extremely useful, well, especially for the case of when you, uh, when you uh, call the subroutine, for example, right? So as I said, when you call the subroutine, uh, some argument um, has to be in there, in the stack. You pass the argument to the, to the stack. You store in there, right? And, and, uh, and remember, if the subroutine also call another subroutine, right? So, I mean, uh, the new variable continue to, to, to be pushed onto the stack, okay? Um, to stay, save it over here. And then when you're done with the subroutine, then you want to restore the value for the calling function, right? So uh, at that time, you start to take the value out of the stack to restore the value. So the stack is, uh, is very um, uh, useful for that purpose, for um, uh, uh, storing something, uh, for argument, for example, right? Um, and then restore the value uh, at the end of the subroutine. So, so you can see that's why the stack is it just have one direction. Uh, when you put the data in, uh, usually the stack is, is last in, first out, right? You remember that uh, if you have a stack of, uh, of disks, right? So you put the disk in here, and the last disk uh, will come last, right? And when you pop it out, you have to take from this end. You don't have the other end to take out. So that's why the, 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 the last in will be take out first, okay? Right? So uh, next time, um, we will talk more uh, about the stack, so don't worry. So, um, and please uh, review the um, um, uh, store multiple register and low multiple register because that's exactly the instruction that we use behind the scenes to build, uh, to support the operation of the stack in here, okay? Uh, with that, do you have any uh, last questions? Okay, seems that you are uh, is homework seven due Monday. Yeah, yes, 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 Matthew. Well, hopefully, it's okay. So, if you have any problem, then then let me know. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, and uh, uh, try your best. Okay, this is a very difficult time uh, for all of us. Uh, but try to uh, to get through. Okay, just uh, um, just two more months, and we're done.